Hey guys, welcome back to another sprite animation tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a basic jump animation. So I'm going to be showing the right way how to do it first and then I'll show you the wrong way that most people do it so you know, you know what not to do. So here, I've just kind of set up a little stage here, you know, it's, it's nothing really, Sonic, two platforms. We're going to make him jump between the two. So the right way of doing this, okay, is so you, with Sonic, he already has uh, he has one animation. He just has the spin. It's not showing it for where, but it, it, it exists. I don't know why it's not showing that, but you know it's here. Okay. So what you do is you put the jump animation wherever they were last, wherever the character was last standing, and then you want to turn this into a symbol. Name it whatever. It doesn't really matter. So you have a symbol inside of a symbol. So we have symbol one and then inside symbol one we have the spin animation so this is where we're going to do the actual jump so i found with sonic it's fair enough to go like 25 frames on 60 fps and then go up a few times his height it doesn't really matter how high maybe two and a half and then 55 frames on uh 60 fps back down so we're going to put tween on both of these and then we're going to do Instead of a classic team tween, we're going to do an ease out and then a sign, and then we're going to do an ease in and then a sign. So, you know, obviously, when you go up, you slow down and then you start coming back down, and then you speed up the closer you get to the ground. So, that's, that's pretty much it. So, that's the basic jump. But, you know, it's in one spot. So, how do we get it to the other side? And this is what we do. So, we go back outside of the symbol and we want to keyframe the end of the animation and then move it over to where the character is going to end up after the jump and then just do a normal tween. So then, goes with it. And then we can just add another jog animation afterwards and then we're done. And there we go. I know it's a bit laggy, but it, that's the basic jump. So obviously one thing you want to look out for is making sure the speed is about right but that's like a case by case thing i can't tell you exactly how to do it because there's not an exact way to do it it's just make sure they don't look like they're going too fast so let's say so at that speed and then if we were to just move this all the way over here you know it's going to be jogging and then it looks awkward so you know that's one thing you've got to watch out for so now i'm going to show you the wrong way to do this that i know a lot of people do and it's terrible i'm going to explain why it sucks um, okay, so what so what most people do is instead of doing the symbol and then classic twin whatever, they just leave it as it is, so the, just the single jump animation just there, and then they do motion twin. So I've explained before why motion twins suck, but the long and the short of it is, you know, the, you can't be very accurate with them, they don't work very well and they clutter your timeline up because they have to make a separate layer just for the motion twin for some reason. And what most people do is just move it over and then curve the line, which looks a bit awkward. Because you know it's like it's not really the same speed. You can't it doesn't like slow down towards like the tip of it. You know what I mean? It just it looks awkward. Avoid doing this. So I, you can't even I can't even really put my finger on why it, why it's awkward. It just looks off, like so he doesn't slow down as he comes to the top of the jump, really. And then he doesn't speed back up as he comes back down. And then not only that, it collects the timeline. So, you know, don't do this, do it with the previous method. Okay, so I'm going to show one more thing that some people might struggle with, and that is animations that have separate frames of movement for the jump. So we're going to use Mario as an example. Uh, I know he's a bit small, so we're not really going to move him. but. So he has two frames for his jump. So I've put both of those frames into one symbol. So he has this frame where he's up and then this frame where he's going back down. So we do the same method. So we convert this into a symbol and then we'll just animate him going up and then coming back down. So, you know, it's, it's the same method, but as you can see, he doesn't really, he doesn't change his frame which is what we want to do. So you want to make sure, so in the symbol, you have both frames of the jump or however many frames of the jump that you need for whatever character you're doing. And when they get to the certain point, like for this, so as he comes back down, we're going to set a keyframe here. Well, we could have done it there, but you know, we'll do it here just for showing off. And we'll set the frame to two on the symbol. So you want to make sure the symbol is on single frame and then swap it over. 
And then we, as we can see, he changes his frame. Now, one more advantage that I see with, um, with doing these symbol jumps is that you can reuse these. So you don't have to keep animating the same jump every single time. You can just keep reusing this jump and it just makes life a bit easier. It makes animating stuff a bit quicker because you already have the jump animated. So that's really it for this tutorial, guys. Really quick and simple. So I hope this helps some of you because I know a lot of people struggle with animating jumps and they do them wrong with the motion twin. So, you know, I, I, I hope this helps. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.